Okay, welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. This one's going to be all about Fireworks 8. Well, not all about Fireworks 8, all about using live filters in Fireworks 8. What we're going to look at is the difference between live and just regular traditional filters and how to apply, edit, work with, delete, and save live filters. Whew, that's a mouthful. Okay, so. What we're going to look at first is the advantage to using live filters in most situations as opposed to just plain old traditional filters. All right, the biggest difference between live and traditional filters is traditional filters go in and alter and change the pixel makeup of any bitmap graphic. And not only that, but if the graphic that you're applying one of those filters to is not bitmap, if it's a vector graphic, it's going to convert that vector graphic into a bitmap object okay and another thing is you can't really go back and undo them without just taking the entire filter off you can't just say oops that was too much I want to you know cut back on it a little bit the beauty of live filters is you it doesn't make a permanent change and you can constantly go in and tweak it as you want and if you you decide to make your object bigger or smaller or expand it in a certain way or add to it or whatever, the filter will change accordingly. It will keep vector objects vector and it will still obviously remain editable. The filter that is will remain editable and so will your vector object for that matter. Okay? And not only does it remain editable, this is for vector and bitmap objects and text. Um, you can always go in and remove a certain filter if you like. A big disadvantage to using regular filters is you can always undo them, yes, as long as it's still in your history. Okay? But what if you save your program and you exit and you come back the next day or you come back in an hour, you open it up, you can't undo it. And if it's something that you just drew and you don't like it, well, you have to redraw it all. Live filters, no problem. You go in, you've got a list of them, you say, okay, I don't like the way this one looks, get rid of it, and it's gone. Okay? Matter of fact, live filters are so much easier to use and so much nicer to use. Macromedia has included many more live filters than traditional filters here in Fireworks. So that's very nice. Now, that's not to say traditional filters are horrible and there's no use for them. Um, traditional filters are useful and there's a lot of times where you're going to use them and you're going to want to use them. Um, matter of fact, here's an example. Here I have this background image. I'm going to cl close off my other two layers. Just hit that I button to make them invisible. I've got this image here, which was photo of the week. And... I, I like the picture, it's nice, but I want to darken it a little bit and I want to make it a little more deeply saturated than it is, okay? Go up here to filters, go to adjust color, make sure you have the image selected. Go up here to filters, go to adjust color, and come here to hue saturation. And I'm watching the image here, I've got the preview checked, I'm not colorizing. I am going to drop my lightness down, whoops, that's way, way too much. Drop my lightness down, just maybe 10, and I'm going to bump up the saturation, maybe 15. Okay, just like that. If we hit preview, we can see the difference. Pretty big difference, all right? But there we go. We've darkened it, and we've added more saturation, and that's a change that I'm sure I'm not going to want to go back and change. It's, you know, something that you're doing to affect the image, and you want it to affect the image. Um, other times where you're going to use a filter like that is if a photo is not properly lit, it's underexposed. You might use levels or curves, brighten it up a little bit. That's generally speaking something you're not going to want to go back and say, hey, I like the underexposed photo better. I want it to go back to being dark and not looking right. Usually you don't want to do that. Anyway, live filters in older versions of fireworks were known as live effects. So if you've been working with fireworks for a, lot, for a while, I'm sure you remember that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, live filters are basically just filters that you can apply live filters are effects you can apply to any bitmap vector or text object and it remains bitmap vector or text whereas like I said with the filters it converts it all to bitmap you have no choice now let's create an effect here I am going to 
move this text and this arrow up to this other layer and shut them off. I'm going to select this cloud and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can really see what's going on here. All right, so we've got this bitmap cloud here that I've just scaled up to basically fill the image. And we're going to apply a few live filters to it. But before we can apply live filters to it, we need to know how to actually get to live filters. We know that regular filters are up here. Live filters are down here in the properties panel under filters. Now it doesn't say live filters, it just says filters, but these are indeed live filters because if you roll over that plus, you can see it says add live filters or choose a preset which are presets of live filters. Now I've got this drop down menu which is moving off screen. The first thing we're going to do to this cloud is we're going to come down and there's an option called shadow and glow which you can't see and inside of there we're going to hit drop shadow. Okay, And here we have some options for this drop shadow. We are going to increase opacity to about 75 percent and we're going to increase the blur to 6. That's the softness and we're going to make the angle we're going to slide that around to the bottom which is about 275 is what the bottom is um, now you couldn't see that but a circle popped up and basically you just click and hold your mouse and rotate it to any side of the circle you want to get that angle and then over here this is the distance from the cloud your shadow is going to be you can see as I move it further and further the shadow gets further and further from the cloud right around 8 is good Okay, and then this is the color of the shadow. We could switch to a white shadow if we wanted. It's more like a glow. Shadows are generally dark, so we're going to leave it black. And we're not going to worry about knockout right now. And then just click anywhere, and that closes that menu up. You can see now here is our first live effect or live filter. We have it right here, and any others we put onto this cloud are going to appear below this. Okay, let's apply a couple more live filters to this cloud. First thing we're going to, or second thing, excuse me, we're going to apply is a little bevel to this. We're going to come down to bevel and emboss, which once again you can't see, it is off screen. Under the bevel and emboss menu, there's an option inner bevel. We're going to do that. And there are a few of these options that are off screen, but basically I want to leave, or not leave, move this to smooth. Okay, we're going to set this to about 25, right there. And the opacity, we're going to up to 90. Or that's not opacity, is it? <laughs> we're going to put that at about 90. That's the um, the contrast, how much that edge sticks out. So really, it it could be considered opacity. That's what they call it in Photoshop. And then the blurring of that edge. We're not going to put much blurring on. Maybe two, one or two. We'll set the softness to. And then the angle, which is off screen here. Um, leave that at 135. And there's also... A, another little drop down menu down there, leave that on raised and just click anywhere to make that menu go away. You can see now we have drop shadow and inner bevel. The last thing we're going to add here is under adjust color and that is color fill. Okay, so under adjust color, color fill, this little menu pops up and we're going to give it this lightest gray right here. And we're going to leave the blend mode at normal and opacity at 100. But now if we look at our cloud, you will notice that our drop shadow is basically all gone and our inner bevel is gone. And that's because the color fill is covering it up. There's a quick and easy way around this, and I'm going to show you that right now. Basically, the way these live filters work is it's kind of like layers down in here. Just the stuff on the bottom is on top, and the stuff on the top is on bottom. All right, so this color fill has been applied after the inner bevel and the drop shadow. So if we just click and drag the color fill and move it up on top of the inner bevel and drop it, you're going to see that now it is underneath that inner bevel. So we can see the inner bevel again. I'm going to grab the color fill and drag it underneath the drop shadow as well so we can see the entire drop shadow again. And there we go. A nice little extruded cloud with a drop shadow behind it there on our stage. Now something that's really pretty cool about these live filters, I'm going to scale this cloud down, is that you can take the effect you have put on this cloud and apply it very easily to another object in a number of ways. But one pretty cool way we're going to look at here is copying and pasting it onto another object. It's pretty simple. What we're going to do is select that cloud. We're going to come up here to edit and hit copy. Now we're going to select this arrow here. This is a vector object. We're going to come up to edit and we're going to hit paste attributes. And that's going to paste those attributes of the cloud 
onto this arrow. It's very nice. Now, I don't really want all these filters here on this arrow so we can get rid of them. And the way you get rid of these filters is by selecting them and hitting the minus button. All right, that gets rid of all of those uh, filters there. And you can't click and shift click a whole list of filters to get rid of them. You have to actually individually click them and hit the minus button for each one. Now, this is a vector object we're working with. And just as a quick example, we're going to try to apply a traditional filter to this. So we're going to come up here to blur and we're going to say Gaussian blur. And you can see that up pops this warning dialog box. This operation will convert vectors to bitmaps. We don't want to do that. But that's what happens when you try to do that. And that also shows up when you try to edit text with one of those filters. So that was what I was talking about before when I mentioned that it converts all of your vectors to bitmaps, which generally isn't what you want it to do. And I touched on text before and how text was something that you could use live effects or live filters on. And the importance of using them on text is very simply that text will remain editable text if you use a live filter. If you use a traditional filter, that text becomes rasterized text and is no longer editable. Okay, so if I wanted to blur this text or add noise to this text or adjust the color or whatever, I would be running the risk of if I had to replace this text or add a word or two, I would have to get rid of the text and start from scratch and retype whatever I typed. So in this case, let's come down here. Actually, let's just come up here to edit and hit paste attributes. And we've pasted the attributes from this cloud now to this text. Okay, but if I came in here, I can still double click and here comes another line of text. Okay, I can still go in and edit and add type or take type away or whatever I wanted to do. It's still editable text and that is very nice. Um, and it's a big time saver and it's more of a peace of mind kind of thing where you can always go back and edit, fix, change as you want. Okay? A couple of little things I want to show you about controlling and working with these uh, live filters. Number one, the whole point of working or using live filters in the first place is that you can go back and edit them. Well, there's two easy ways you can go back and edit live filters, and that is either by double clicking that filter or by clicking that little eye. There's a little blue circle with an eye in the middle. You hit that, and you can come in and edit if I want to make this a darker gray or whatever. Okay? So. I just put a white fill on that text. The other thing I want to point out is that if you want to see what your object looks like without maybe a couple of your filters, but you're not sure you want to get rid of them, you just hit that little check and it will show you what your object looks like without that filter affecting it. Okay? So that's a really helpful thing to know how to do. I'm going to scale this text down pretty small and tuck it away in the corner. Matter of fact, I'm going to hide it all together. And I'm going to hide that cloud. We're back to this original image here. Now, if I want to apply a live filter to this, it's all fine and well. I'm going to come in here and just do a quick levels adjustment. Let's say we want to brighten it up a little bit. Okay. I'm just going to apply that just for the sake of having a live filter on this image. Now, what if we're looking at this image and we say, hey, wouldn't it be really cool if maybe we could just have this tomato and this pepper maybe more saturated really pop out and the rest of the stuff just sort of be there or maybe everything else get really dark and this stuff just stay light well applying live filters let me show you what happens you can't really just apply a live filter to a certain portion of a bitmap object live filters apply themselves to entire objects but there's an easy way to get around that I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to select this object and I'm going to come up here and hit restore bitmap selection. Now this is only going to work for me. It's not going to work for you if you're trying to follow along. I have previously made a selection in this image and I'm just going to I save the selection and I'm now going to restore it. And it's a selection around that pepper and tomato. Now I want to get these off of this layer and onto another layer so that they're their own object. So I'm going to come up here to edit and I'm just going to hit copy. I'm going to come up to this layer here and I'm going to hit edit paste okay and
it's pasting them right there in place. And you can see here, I can close out my background and I still have that pepper and that tomato sitting there. So that's very nice. Now what I can do is with that pepper and tomato selected, make sure I select it, I can hit filters and I can say adjust color and I can say levels and I could just, you know, blow it way out if I wanted. All right. And you can see only that pepper and tomato have been affected. The rest of the image isn't. So that's the way you're going to get around that if you want to do that. Uh, and you're going to notice if you just try to select part of the image, like if I just try to roughly select this bottle of oil, I can go back to my selection tool and the filter section just isn't there. The way I can make that filter selection appear is by right here in the bottom right hand corner, there's this little red circle with a white X and that says edit or exit, excuse me, bitmap mode. Problem is as soon as I click that, it gets rid of my selection. Okay, so that's why you have to actually cut it out and move it up to its own layer in order to be able to apply a change like that. Two little things I just want to mention before we move on and look at saving some of your filters. One of them is when you have a group of objects, if you apply a live filter to that group, every object within that group is affected. Okay, so either use like the sub selection tool or something like that to just get objects, just single objects inside of a group. The other thing is, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pull up the cloud again. If I'm looking at this cloud and I want to know what it looks like without all these filters, I can uncheck them all. But that that can take a while and if you some of these objects, you know, if you're working with an object and you've got like 20 styles on it, it's going to take a while to go through and uncheck all of them. So you can come here under the filters menu, go under options and there's a selection here just under all on off screen here. It's called all off. That shuts them all off. You can go back in, options, all on. Just like that. Real simple, real easy. All right, so let's look at saving these filter sets. You can save filter sets as what Fireworks calls styles, and they're very similar to styles in Photoshop. Okay? To save a style, we're going to save this style. Come in here, go to options, and hit save as style. Now, this new style dialog box pops up, and you can give it a name. We're going to call it cloud one nothing really descriptive and we're just going to have checked effect okay hit okay and now we've saved that as a style now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna hit save as style once again now if you look at this dialog box you can see that you are not limited to just live filters you can save fill colors you can save fill types fill types being like gradients or whatever or if it's just a solid color you can edit the fill type the fill color, the stroke type, if it's a dashed or dotted or solid line, stroke color. If you're working with text, the font, the text size, the style, and other attributes of the text. So there's a whole ton of things you can do with styles. A lot of really cool things, but we're just looking at live filters. And that's this is the way to save live filters for use later on. So we've created that style, but it's really nowhere to be seen. Oops, I don't want to do that. I want to apply that style to this arrow once again. Well, there's a couple ways we can do that. The first way is come under filters and you can see your custom filters are going to be, or your custom styles, excuse me, are going to be placed in an area of their own here in this menu. I can just hit cloud one. All right. I'm going to get rid of all of them because I'm going to show you another way. Come up here under the window menu, drop down and hit styles. And you have all of these styles, all of these styles that have come with fireworks here are available to you. They're all default styles. But right here at the bottom, if we roll over, we can see it says cloud one. And if I select that, that's my style. This is also the way you're going to get rid of a style if you don't want it. Because if you noticed, when we came over here and hit save style, once you hit OK, that's it. There, you can't really delete it, and you can't delete it in here. So you have to select it here, and there's this little trash can in the bottom right-hand corner. Hit that. It says, would you like to delete the selected styles? Hit OK. And it deletes the selected styles. Now it leaves them applied to the objects on stage, but it just gets rid of it. So if you're trying to free up space in here or whatever, you have space freed up. All right, so that's it. I mean, that's basically everything there is to know about live filters. As long as I covered everything I was planning on covering, and I believe I did. So I hope you learned something from this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll go check the site out, site www.tutvid.com, for lots of other free video tutorials. And uh, thank you for watching.